Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Daily Dub, Meet the Dubs, James edition. Isn't everybody excited? I'm excited. And we're at my house and not at GameStop, which is great. Yep. Because usually when you see James, uh, it's at GameStop. But probably what you don't, what you may not realize is we're usually just hanging out at GameStop. Like, yeah. It's not usually I'm coming and buying stuff. Like, that's whenever there's stuff. Everything I usually buy from him is pre-ordered, so it's once every so often there's the shopping day, but it's the way we get to hang out. But sometimes we hang out here or other places, which is great. He showed me a pizza place not too long ago. That was yeah, we might quite go, good. go there again like tonight. Mean, maybe so I'm all right with that. Those garlic balls are not good for me. Well, they're good. For, well, we had you had a salad for lunch. You can have balls in the mouth with butter. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, I could consider it. Balls in the mouth, nothing wrong with that. So, the first question that I think we would all be interested in from James. First, let me tell you about how we met. So, we've known each other, I think, maybe four or five years now. Because uh, I've moved, I've lived back in Atlanta for almost five years. It must have been right as you came back. Yeah. It's been a hot minute. It's been a while. And uh, James was uh, managing the GameStop in the mall of Georgia. And uh, Kimberly and I were, um, at that time, we've been collecting Funko for a long time. So we were just buying pops everywhere, like wherever. Movie stop was still a thing back then. Yep. Um, hot Topic, whatever. And uh, when we'd go into that store, we were just so impressed with, with the gentleman there that would help us and how he would remember the things we were looking for and call us by our name and all this stuff. And um, eventually, we just started to shift all of our business to James at the GameStop. Um, but then specifically, uh, he did a, a very kind thing. And somehow that I have no idea how he did this. He helped my parents, who I don't think he's ever met. Nope. You get me, me after it. Yeah, Cole, yes. Got me an NES Classic for Christmas. This has got to be like 2015. Right? It was, yeah, it was the year that like you couldn't get. You couldn't that. get it, and yeah. it was the only thing I wanted. And as you know, he says this a lot, like I don't, it's hard to buy me a gift because I'm just going to buy what I want. Mm -hmm. But that, you couldn't get it. There was not a way to get it. Mm -hmm. And um, surprise, surprise, I opened it up on Christmas Day. And I, I still to this day don't know how that happened. But uh, that just showed, I think, all of us a little bit of his heart and the type of person he is. And, and we've just become real friends. You know, all of that is secondary or even beyond secondary. And, and, and we've uh, hung out a lot. He's a big part of our life. So that's how we've met. James is a, is a kind gentleman. Are you happy to uh, Yeah, friends? honestly, y'all were like a staple like of my Saturday nights. Because back at this point, like, I had to close every Saturday, which is like kind of a drag because I want to hang out with my daughter but like you gotta live that retail life um gotta get paid you're not wrong somebody's gotta pay for whatever nonsense she wants to do um but every Saturday day, like without fail y'all were in the mall we should walk in the stores figure out what was going on and it just became a like a positive staple like if I was gonna work from 11 or 12 to 9 o'clock that night oh yeah um y'all were a nice pick me up right in the middle of the day or later in the evening to help me through that last little bit where uh, just some positivity was infused into the store and uh, it was something that you, know, you latch on to and obviously you want past just the you know, 15 minutes y'all are in the yeah. store. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I can't imagine the type of crap that you see working in a, in a retail environment. There has to be a bunch of negative stuff, but... Um, you know, for, for you, what is it, what do you like? Because I, I know we've talked in the past, and um, I'll just, right here on this video, I would hire James in a heartbeat. And if the right opportunity presented itself, I absolutely would, to the point where I was going to shoehorn in, in an opportunity that I was going to, I don't know what I was going to have to do to get HR to prove just it. But a job. I just believe that uh, James is such a, has such a strong work ethic that he can do whatever he wants to do. But he likes being in retail and selling things and customers and mm -hmm. uh, why is that? Like what, what is it that you like about that? So I think that my thing I like of the most um, is obviously I like to be mentally engaged, right? And I like to come up with solutions for people. So if I have, you know, I think one of my favorite stories for working in retail, I'll tell you, is I think it was the Christmas before this. Um, I had a mom who had a son and a daughter, an older daughter, younger son. The daughter wanted, I think at the time it was the newest iPhone, I want to say it was like an 8. So it must have been the year before this. Um, and the son wanted to switch. And the mom was like, the daughter's easy, month to month, I just throw it on my cell phone bill, I got this. Not a big deal. My son switched, 
300 bucks, that's no games, plus games, plus a case, what a minimum $400 plus after tax. That's a tough one to do. And I, I, I listened to her story and I went, well, you know what I can do, but I, if you wanna partner with your daughter, I have a plan. What does your daughter have now? Oh, she has like an iPhone 6S or a 7, whatever she had, you know. Yeah, I need the latest, greatest thing. It was the only thing she was asking for, whatever. So we partnered with the daughter and the mom was able to trade in the iPhone for like $200. Well, she was able to then get the daughter, so she got the daughter the phone early, right before Christmas, put it on the plan. I held a switch for her. They came in, traded in the phone, got like the 200 bucks for the phone, put it against the switch immediately, got the switch, games, a uh, case, screen protector, like the whole setup. Like he had like the whole setup for Christmas and like we stayed within the mom's budget and like if I wasn't there and if it was like if she had gone to a Walmart and like looked for a switch and like they didn't have those solutions and like she would have just been clerked and wouldn't have got anything and it would have been a bummer the fact that I was there like I made an impact and like my passion for finding solutions for people has lasting effect you know it's when I, I had a I had somebody come in this morning that um, has been my customer for years just like you She's uh, this older grandma who has grandkids here and grandkids in oh. Texas. I oh. don't know if you've ever been in the store when she was there, but she used to just be a mall walker. Like she was doing like oh. what walks the mall in the yeah. morning. And one day she stopped by to look for something for one of her grandkids. And we fostered this relationship where now this lady like has a rewards card and like get prayers for these games and make sure she has all the Funkos or the Amiibos or whatever her kids want or whatever the grandkids want. And like she has an outlet and she has a guy. Um, she called me, I forget what game it was. It was something ridiculous. Oh, it was Black Friday. On one of her grandkids, one of those one of those Mario Kart Switch bundles. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. She calls me like uh the day before Thanksgiving, Wednesday. right? Yeah. And she was like, Hey, I keep seeing this popping up online. Like, do you have one? Like, can I get one from you? And I was like, you know what? Um, like, yeah, they're our doorbuster for Thursday. They're, they're gonna be tough. Um, like, let me see what I can do. Like, what are you doing Thursday? Can you come in and see us? I mean, I have family. I'm like the grandma. Like, I do yeah. the cooking. <laughs> Making turkey. And so, like, I kind of pulled some strings and made an exception and got one to the store and held for, for that Friday morning. So she came in at like 7 a.m. Friday and picked up a Switch with the Mario Kart. And like she doesn't realize, like that was a doorbuster that was gone by like four fifteen Thursday afternoon. Yeah, she just knows she appreciates how easy it was to come in and yeah. get it. Like I can deal with that. I can be the layer between the guest and what they want. That difficulty, I can sure. be can the it. buffer. Yeah, that eats that and lets them just have their experience and it be simple and pleasant. And, and like if you just think about what he said. That's why he's good, and that's why, I mean, I believe he sell anything. And I know we've talked about this in the past, but approaching your job with that mindset, which is there is, here is you as a buyer, here is what you want. There's always a, a gap. There's some complexity. There's something, There's something, like I can't, you know, the people that just are a cash buyer of anything on the, on the earth, they don't need any help. Mm -hmm. They just go buy it. But that's extremely rare. <laughs> even, yeah. even the most wealthy people hire brokers and agents and things like that to help them get what they want. Even if they're a billionaire, they still have to use someone because there's still probably complexities to get what they want, whether that's, you know, you gotta get a, a regulation like, cleared. Like or a singing Jason Voorhees NECA. And oh, yes, yeah. that's, it's upstairs, it's <laughs> wonderful. Um, so speaking of that, you spoke about, we talked about Funko and Amiibo. Uh, you are at the front lines of the you know, this community, the collector mm -hmm. community that's watching this. So you probably see how the trends have gone. I know just, you know, for, for I don't know how many years I've come in and look at your pre-order list, for years and years, and there's things on there that have never, ever, ever been on there before, and now they're taking over that mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. So, like, what what have you seen in the last four or five years of the trends of, of people that collect kind of since GameStop has gone into that market with the Think Geek acquisition and all that kind of stuff? So, you're a great example because you're not unique in the situation where you've transitioned from Bunko to action figures, higher-end stuff. You see a lot more of this action figure, um, the $25 like Dragon Ball statues, the NECA action figures, the um, Marvel Legends, the Marvel, uh, the Black Series, the Marvel Legends. Um, you have people who are out there looking for that specific stuff who maybe five years ago, four years ago, three years ago were like primarily Funko people and they, their collecting has just evolved. Um, 
And I think that you have like a new wave of people who are getting into Funko, like that 16, 17 year old girl that comes in here looking for like the Riverdale Pops or, you know, we have, I think that this new wave of Funko people is really excited about what's coming out, like the Office Pops. If I'm, if That's, if I, that is the thing that Funko still occupies a great space is because of, I don't know how much money they spend on licensing. Mm -hmm. But if you want an office yeah. product for your home, a collectible, it's it. Yeah, it's just it. a pop. And and you could say that probably a hundred times over with licenses they mm -hmm. have. And that, that used to be the case of Lord of the Rings or mm -hmm. Game of Thrones or they were it. They were the only player in town for basically anything that's at Marvel, Star Wars, DC. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, it's remarkable how much. So do you, do you see a lot of, uh, is it more that stuff versus... The Avengers pops or things like that that are kind of common. So it'll evolve. I think that you kind of have waves. Like you have the set of people who started collecting Funkos four years ago. And you have people who have started collecting Funkos a year ago. Maybe in three years, those people will start the transition that you've done. Where action figures, higher end statues. Like you are figure aware. Arts. Yeah, figure arts. Like you're aware of that kind of stuff. And until they get ingrained in that community and kind of understand the complexities and what else is out there to be offered, that Funkos are a really good entry point. I think that Funko has really been a, ga a gateway drug. I think it is. I, I, I would, a lot of people call Funko uh, an easy thing to say about Pops. Is there this generation's beanie baby? I would argue that's not a great comparison. I understand what people are saying. Mm -hmm. It's a simple way to say it's a fad that's gonna be huge and these things are worth $300 and then they're going to fall away. Mm -hmm. Like, that may happen. That mm -hmm. may be a thing that happens. But the big difference is what we just talked about. Funko is licensed. I think it's a stepping stone. Bitty Babies were just a bear, a rhinoceros. Iggy the... Spider-Man Funko Pop will still be Spider-Man mm -hmm. and will still be desirable by people 25 years from now that collect Spider-Man stuff. So they're, they're putting out stuff that's already 100 years old, the things that have stood the test of time. 80-year Batman Pop. Yeah, yeah. If, I, if I want a, an example of this... So I think there, that's a key difference, but I, I do. I think it's a gateway drug. I think that's a very good point. I think they know that because I think we're going to come out with um, smaller ones that are a few dollars or the five star. Like they, they actually keep going the other way with the price point. Mm -hmm. How cheap can we get to get you a, a, a you a know a friend's mm -hmm. something? How low can we go to just get you? And then you're going to buy the bigger one, the bigger one, the bigger one. Um, and there'll be movie, movie, the movie moments, the right? The movie moments, which I like now quite they're, a bit. Now they're transitioning so. into the, um, the ones that are like houses. Like there's like a Ghostbusters like, yeah, guy I've, in a house. Yeah, I think they're called uh, Towns, Funko Towns or something like that. Yeah. Is Funko the name home. of it home, maybe? Um, but that that's interesting. But another thing with GameStop, um, they, they have so much stuff available that you don't know. So like I think a lot of the reason why people, when we get into statues or figure arts, is you just have, you don't see it. You want to know the weirdest one I've had last yes. Christmas? Yes. It was a so this mom came in and she was looking for that Boba Fett Nerf gun that I had, the mm -hmm. one that I personally bought. Um, at the time, I just searched Boba hashtag reserve, like to bring oh. out what was reservable. Boba popping candy. Uh, Boba garage stool. Like I'm talking about Boba Fett. Boba Fett, but like his but face, for, it, like at the workbench uh, on a on a on a seat, like it was a, 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 a like a stool, like. Like knee level, a little bit higher or whatever huh. that you would sit on, and I went. So the Boba Fett I have stuff I have up for reserve. I have this Nerf gun I was talking about. And apparently I have a garage stool, <laughs> and she was like, "Oh, I'll take both of those." He loves Boba Fett. The garage and I, stool. And I was like, "All right, cool beans." So that's. I mean, the less of that, ask to see what is available for pre order or look on the app. I mean, the app's not as good mm -hmm. as what what your uh, what your local person can pull up for you. But like recently. The biggest thing I found was uh, Asmus Toys, who you watch channel, you know they're like Hot Toys, they're six scale manufacturer, and they have the Lord of the Rings license, they're the only six scale one. But well, we found that they had Arwen, and that's the most recent, that's the newest release about to come out. Well, normally I order that stuff from Sideshow. If I order it from Sideshow, it's gonna be the same price as when I order it from GameStop, except Sideshow's gonna charge them $25 shipping. And from James, he's gonna have it for me, no shipping, I'm gonna get rewards points, if I have something to trade in, whatever that may be, mm -hmm. I can trade in for it. Uh, that's great. I, I, I didn't know that. And I think um, because a lot of people just don't register that with GameStop. Why would GameStop have a $200 six scale yeah, no, figure? Sure. That doesn't make sense to me. 
uh, they don't people don't know. Like right to this day, when I look today, all of the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball upcoming stuff, Android Twenty One, I think Brawly, some of the, that are sold out everywhere. GameStop sells available for mm-hmm. pre order. People don't know. They don't know to do it. Or GameStop is a much bigger buyer than all the online stores, big bad toy, the things that don't have physical, they have a buying power with their I relationship. I think that, man, the article I was reading, after Toys R Us left, I want to say the vacuum, we became the third biggest toy store. I think that's true, something yeah. Something like that. And you know what's cool about me and Probably Walmart, store, Target, and GameStop, yeah. I would bet, yeah. Uh, is that we give people the ability to collect stuff that's maybe out of their price range. Like for me personally, I bought that Mace Windu lightsaber, right? I'm a big fan of Mace. I have his Black Series figure pre-ordered. And, like, I won't get the whole line. I'll get just Mace because he's my man. Um, But, like, so when I got that lightsaber, right, it was uh, the bag promotion with the 20% off. I had Mm -hmm. store credit from some trade-ins. And I dumped some of my rewards points into it. So I ended up paying, like, 50 bucks for, like, a hundred and something dollars. That had just released. That had just released. And had I had to been, like, here's $150 cash, I've been, like, I don't like Mace Windu that much. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. That's a, that's exactly right. And that's um, so. I mean, yes, the reputate the, the the GameStop meme, so to speak, is here's this pile of games. I'll give you fifty two cents for that, right? Yeah. Um, that's not being educated. Pay attention, or just get be get to know like really like be friends. Yeah. With your local game, not just so I can take advantage of you and you can help me buy stuff. Like try to get to know. Chances are, a person that works in GameStop probably has something in common with you that's watching this video. Yeah. There's just a chance of that. Well, I have, you have a lot of people where you like, uh, like, I want, like, I have a lot of knowledge. Like, I know how to work the system. Right, what are you like, talking about before? I yeah. just traded in, like, a copy of Splatoon 2 against Yoshi and got $42 for my Splatoon and paid 18 bucks for Yoshi. Like, I, if, you, if you go to your local GameStop and you go... Hey, what's the best way to trade in a bunch of games and get the best deal? Like they want Someone, your business. They want you to do that. And they'll and, be like, "Yeah, do you have like a bunch of games yep. that are worth a bunch of money? We want them because we'll resell them." Wait and until we want to do a good deal. next Monday, and if you bring in six old games and you use it to buy this new game, we're gonna give you five times the credit yeah. on those six games, and then you can just immediately trade me in the game you just got yeah. and be ahead two hundred dollars. And buy the lightsaber and have fifty dollars credit, and, and you come out. You haven't spent a single dollar. Yeah. And yes, if you brought those six games on a different day, you may only get fifty bucks for them. Correct. But you can you can manipulate that. And the biggest example I have of that, seductive Steve, who you've all met, myself and Kimberly, all with very little things that we traded in, somehow ended up with xbox one switch vr like all in these massive thousand dollars worth of transactions all by him saying hey when this is going to come here's here's you know bring these games that you have if you happen to have some of these do it or if you can find them somewhere bring them in Mm -hmm. you know the the whatever game that best buy happened to put on sale for ten dollars we're buying for twenty dollars you know whatever the case may be and end up with a whole bunch of stuff and yeah. it's, 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 um, I mean, yes, that's work, but it, it took, it took like an hour. I mean, Steve, the day Steve went up there, we were probably in your store for 45 minutes or an yeah, hour. Yeah, you had a lot of stuff. He had a lot of stuff, but he probably made seven or eight hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars plus at the yeah. end of that. Cause we I'll like make a, $800 an hour. We use like a buy two, get one free. So like, I want to say that day. On the systems. Yeah. yeah you use on the like, systems. You did like a PS4 Pro, an Xbox One X and a Switch. Yeah. And it was all the switch was free because yeah. I buy two get one free. Um, so yeah, like if y'all help, if y'all ask for help, like we get paid by the hour. We don't. We'll sit there and like <laughs> chat with you and help y'all figure out how you can like do get the best deal. Like that's the misconception is like I know a lot of great GameStop managers that would be more than happy to take your time and and turn it into a benefit for you because we know how to work the systems. You just have to trust us. Uh, and you can't treat all of us like used car salesmen. Like, get to right. know us, and we might blow your mind. Yeah, Th- there's still a person that is still at a job that some days is crappy, and just like you and me and my job some days is crappy, and if you walk into the GameStop and they're coming to talk to you, because that's what they have to do, that's their job, they're required to do that, and you're like, ah, leave me alone. You know, you're just kind of cold shoulder to them. And then you're like, oh, why wouldn't you help me? Well, it's your own fault. Like, don't be a, a booty face. Like, be be kind. So 
Anyway, what what do you collect? Real quick before we go, we we're, we're, we're speaking a long time. Touch yourself. What is it that you like to collect? I know you're not a completionist like me, even though I'm trying to not be that. But you have a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of some stuff. I believe. Yeah. So uh, you have Daft Punk SH Free Yards. I think I saw one time at your house. Yeah, those are probably one of my favorites. So I want those. Uh, I Let me a, have them. I have get out of here. Um, no. I have a Darth Revan. So I know he came. He got re released at Best Buy or something like in the you last had it, year. But you had it before that. I had happened. it before that. So I always really liked him. He's he's still one of my favorites. I like the character. Um, I normally do not buy chases when they come through my store because I don't collect a lot of Funko, but the Sub-Zero, Sub-Zero is a special place in my heart. I got his chase. Um, I have all the Jurassic Park people. I don't have the dinosaur. Um, I have a lot of Amiibos, like uh, 140, but like, I don't do all of them. Like, I don't have a Luigi because like... You have 140, but no Luigi. Yeah. Like we, you have almost all of them. Yeah. That's got to be close. Yeah. So like, like 20. I'm like, I have Villager, but like not Wii Fit Trainer. I have like... Well, Wii Fit Trainer is expensive. I have Dr. Is Mario. Expensive, Wii I Wii Fit Trainer? I have Dr. Mario, but not regular Mario. Like... Wow, you have 140 Amiibo and don't have Mario and Luigi. He's a little basic, you know? Do you have Wedding Mario? No. Oh, no, 0%. Are you discriminatory against Mario? Maybe I just... No, yeah. Do you have Link? Uh, I have... The Ocarina of Time Link that a really good friend of mine uh, that is one of my another one of my guests that I talk to a lot, she pre ordered me one through Best Buy and I went across oh, yes. the street and picked it up over there. Those are really expensive now. The the three Ocarina of Time. Yeah, the one that was a Best Buy exclusive, what GameStop, GameStop and Amazon. And Amazon those three I think are, are really expensive. Yes, I have the uh, I, that's the link that I have. Uh, and then um, Pokemon uh, cards, the T C G Oh, yeah. uh, I'm big into the Pokemon TCG. I have competed um, nas- internationally with that um, for several years before I, you know... You, tra- you tra- would travel to tournaments Yeah, stuff, so right? like a couple years ago, before I got my promotion, I was like taking time off as an assistance for manager and like going to Texas and Florida and competing, competing and like ending up in like the top 50 in the entire country um, in the TCG and trading cards and then uh these last couple years i've been I'm very busy with work so i will compete casually and i still do fairly well i will go uh to the north american international championships this summer i would that's like my my summer trip that i always take oh is that where's that and in... uh, that one's going to be in columbus ohio columbus. That, uh, it, it flip-flops between columbus and indianapolis it's about indianapolis you've yeah. been to before mm-hmm. That's cool. Do you uh, do you like it when on Smash Brothers, if you pick Jigglypuff, the announcer seems surprised? Like you, Falcon. Yeah. Oh, Jigglypuff. Yes. No. Um, I like that. I, I do like that. I like uh, I main uh, Villager in that game. Do you really main Villager? I main Villager. Then I play a mean on the Lucina. newest one. Oh, like since Villager's been a thing, I've main Villager. Oh. Yeah, I just lloyed across the map. I haven't turned it on since Piranha... Is Piranha Plant out now? Yes, Piranha Plant is a thing that exists. Yeah, have you played as Piranha Plant? No, but I hear it's very cute. He, like, hops around. (laughs) In his little thing? Yep. Smash Brothers is wonderful. Um, Okay, well, we're going to go play games. That's actually what we're doing tonight. I probably eat pizza. You want pizza? Or uh, or do you want to get tofu dipped in echidna sauce? That doesn't sound good at all. When we end an episode of Meet the Dubs, you have to tell them to squeeze it. I know you're going to say no, but you have to. Every Even mom did it. Okay. You, have to, you have to get them to squeeze it. All right. So, like, after this, I'm gonna, you got to double check. I want you to show me. And if it's a, that's a dirty lie, you got to edit it out. I'll show you right now on camera if you don't believe me. Let's see. Everyone knows. Give me Victoria's squeeze Victoria's it. Victoria's squeeze it. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. And just wait. Again, this could be oh, rub it, rub it. Oh, you look so young. And I bet it passed. It's just like a week, two, couple weeks ago. Oh, no. Oh, I've gone, I've gone the wrong direction. Uh-huh. I've passed gas. He said this doesn't exist, does it? Oh. Oh, it's oh, this oh. terrible television. Yeah. Are you enjoying this? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Oh, poopy pants. Turn, turn this off. No, we're going to do it. We came this far. I have to stop being impatient. All right. And we're viewing it as a hobby. Oh, yeah. To the viewership... Is this your YouTube section? Like it is. Here we go. Because the best. Um, well, I mean, you know. Squeeze it! <laughs> Alright. With, with the magic wand. Don wow. magic wand. Damn. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Now you gotta tell him squeeze it. Squeeze it. Hey!